All right, we are live. I'm going to give Facebook a minute to catch up. Hi, Z. There we go. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning in Spinar community. Thank you for joining me on one other episode of In Spinar. In Spinar is an inspirational conversation designed to empower us with the roadmap for a more peaceful and productive life. I am your host, Dr. Nithi Gupta. Today, I'm going to do something different. I do not have a guest with me today because I wanted to take some time and talk about Reconnect Nashville and see if there are any questions that people might have before Reconnect Nashville this Saturday, September 24th. So what is Reconnect Nashville? It's, it's a little bit of a different conversation, a conversation that we haven't yet opened our blind spots to, a conversation that we don't always feel the need to have. So Reconnect Nashville breaks that awkwardness. Reconnect Nashville is a three hour event on Saturday, September 24 at View Studio Nashville from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. If you have not yet purchased your tickets, you may do so at www.reconnect.expert. So our question for today is, Reconnect Nashville, a different kind of conversation. Save years of frustration and learn from the experts. Over the last three months or so, I have been spreading my message about Reconnect Nashville. And the conversation has mostly been focused on why? Why should people consider attending Reconnect Nashville? But there is one question that often gets overshadowed and that question is who? Who should attend Reconnect Nashville? Is it for adults only? Or is it for children? Or is it for parents with children? Does it have anything to do with professionals? Who is it for? Is it for grandparents? So that's what I'm going to focus a little bit of a time today to peel the layers and see who would be the best audience for Reconnect Nashville, who might benefit from Reconnect Nashville. I was recently talking to a friend about Reconnect and she asked me, so what, what is it about? So I said, it's about screen time. It's about life technology balance. It's about improving our relationship with our devices, reinventing our relationship with our devices so that we can improve our physical health and mental health and so on. She took a second to process this. And then she said, well, my children don't spend much time on screen. So I should be okay then, right? I put on my coach hat and said, this is not only for children, it is for adults too. She seemed very confused. Why is it for adults? I'm a pediatric endocrinologist and my patients are children. The parents of my patients often ask me how much screen time is okay for children of different ages. It surprises me that they never ask me how much screen time is okay for adults, as if somehow adults have a free pass when it comes to screen time. Here is what I tell them. The issue is not how much time is spent on the screens. The issue is not how much time is spent on the screens, but what else could have happened during that time that the screen time is not letting happen. So it's not about the fact that children should not spend more than two hours per day on screen or no more than these many hours if they are these many years old. But what else could they be doing? What else might be the possibilities in that time? An average American spends about three hours per day on leisure-based screen time, okay? I'm not accounting for the fact that we often use technology and devices for work to increase our productivity, to be more efficient, to stay in contact with family and friends. 
I'm referring to screen time as leisure-based screen time, the mindless scrolling of the internet without a specific purpose in mind. So an average American spends about three hours per day on leisure-based screen time. That doesn't sound like a lot to a lot of people, right? Let's do some math here. So three hours per day is about 21 hours per week, which is about 1,092 hours per year, which is 68 days in a year, assuming that we are sleeping seven hours on those days. Yes, 68 days in a year on screens for leisure, just a little over two months per year watching stuff on internet. Now imagine the possibilities. What can be done in two months? What can be accomplished in two months? The possibilities are endless. That's why Reconnect Nashville is an event which is as much for adults as it is for children. Now, <clears throat> you don't have to take just my word for it, okay? I would like you to hear this from a mother herself. Rhonda Zaleski is an educator in Atlanta. She attended Reconnect Atlanta in June 2022. And here is what she had to say. So I'm going to share my screen. And see what Rhonda had to say about Reconnect. Thank you. Um, and I so en enjoyed it, Dr. Hughes and Tara, uh, just tremendously. But I had my mom hat on when I went. And I brought my two daughters, and I thought, ooh, they're going to they're gonna get some information about them on their phone. And I sat there when you gave that test and thought, oh, my gosh, this is about me, too. So it was a wake-up call to me totally. And I scored higher than my daughters. I'm not kidding. And I thought, okay. I hear it, I feel it, I'm on board. And we had we have had conversations each day since, my family, and we're on a mission. So I have to thank you. It's it's we're, we're, it's the mindful part that really spoke more than anything. That we're going to be in the moment. Um, so thank you for that. That was Rhonda Zaleski, a teacher and educator in Atlanta. These are her honest, heartfelt words. She's a mother, she's a parent, and a teacher. Now, who else might benefit from Reconnect Nashville? Professionals, maybe. Professionals without children, maybe. Let's consider the data. An average person checks their phone about 96 to 206 times a day. Yes, that's about every three to five minutes of their waking hours. Every time we get distracted from work because we have this irrational urge to check our devices, it takes us about 25 minutes to regroup our attention and get back on track. Can you imagine the time lost when we check our phones, our device, more than 200 times a day? I was recently talking to another professional and I was describing to him what I do and what I talk about. It, it felt as if a light bulb went on in his head. And he's like, that's why my productivity these days has become essentially zero. I'm at work, I'm sitting at my desk, but I'm not doing anything at all. My mind is constantly running in 10 different directions. I think I'm multitasking, but when I look at my day, at the end of the day, I haven't accomplished anything at all. What, what is multitasking? Is our brain even designed to be able to multitask? We are now getting more and more science that suggests that multitasking is a myth. Our brain is not designed to be able to do two things at the same time. If we think we are doing two things at the same time, what we are actually doing is that we are switching 
from one task to the other, back to the first task, and then to the other. In that process, we are not able to do either of the tasks with full attention. In our brain, in our neurons, a neurochemical reaction needs to take place so that our brain can change its direction from one task to the other, okay? And then in that process, we are distracted, we are losing our productivity, and we are losing our efficiency. Now, again, you don't have to take my word for it. Hear it from someone who has experienced Reconnect, a professional storyteller who has experienced Reconnect Atlanta and the transformation that Reconnect brings. So give me one second while I bring up his video. I feel like I can go on and on about all the wonderful things that have happened since Saturday. First, I left the seminar feeling so grounded and so much more aware of all of the sights and smells that were around me. And I didn't even want to turn my phone back on. In fact, my phone usage has been down, I kid you not, probably 99% since Saturday. I've deleted my social apps, not the accounts, but I've deleted the apps. And I've also blocked all social media on my work computer. So the only way I can access them is by firing up my laptop. And as a result, I have stopped scrolling. I have stopped feeling weird about uncomfortable content that I see on TikTok and Facebook. I've stopped comparing myself to others on Instagram and I cleaned my kitchen. What? <laughs> I cooked, I've been cleaning, I've been exercising, I've been, I feel like I'm starting to take my life back. And I also wrote down that I wanted to get a physical alarm clock. But I decided not to. Instead, I kept my alarm on my phone and put it across the room so that this morning I woke up and not only was my phone away from my bed, but I had to get up out of bed to turn my alarm clock off. And I didn't see this because I was already out of bed and I was awake. So I feel like I killed two birds with one stone. So anyway, all that to say, Thank you for your part in hosting everything that happens on Saturday. And I just thought I would share this with you and you're welcome to share this with anybody that you would like because the messages that were shared, the stories, the data, the science was just so compelling and awesome to know. And I appreciate you and Dr. Gupta, Sorel, Gio, I think Maxwell has summarized the essence of Reconnect Nashville so beautifully in less than three minutes. Now, who else? Who else might want to attend Reconnect? Children? Should children attend the event themselves? Or should they let their parents attend the event and then come home and tell them the gist of the event? I encourage children 10 years and older to attend the event for themselves. Imagine if only the parents were to attend Reconnect and they go home and tell their children about it. Here is what that conversation might look like. Hey Johnny, I just attended this great event called Reconnect where a pediatrician and a neuroscience expert talked about screen time. So you need to get off that phone right now and find something else to do. Do you feel this will help little Johnny? Versus have Johnny come to the event 
and hear all of the information for himself firsthand. At Reconnect Atlanta, we had many students in the audience, ranging from age 10 to 18. Listen to what one of the students had to share about the event. I'm Brighton Zinhorse. Um, I came here today a little bit resistant, um, like most people, probably my age group. Uh, phones didn't really seem like a big issue to me, mobile devices. Uh, but after coming here, I realized that super dependent on my mobile device, maybe even a little bit addicted to like social media and talking to people um, and spending way more time on things that weren't as productive or helpful for myself. And this helped me sort of deal with that and give me the tools to be better and be more productive for my future. And I, I'm super thankful for that. And this was awesome. Thank you, Bryden, for being brave and for sharing your thoughts with us. So Reconnect is a three-hour unique event that is leading to transformation, that is leading to transformational changes in people who are attending it and in also people who are hearing about it from those who have attended it. At Reconnect Nashville, we answer three main questions related to smartphone dependency slash addiction. Why, how, and what? I'm greatly inspired by Simon Sinek, and my questions are also inspired by Simon Sinek. The questions of why, how, and what. Why are our devices addictive? Or why is the content that we access on our devices addictive? How does it affect our health and well-being? And we talk not just about physical health. Health includes physical health, mental health, emotional health, social health, and spiritual health. And the third question, what can we do about it? How can we achieve life technology balance when we are so surrounded by technology? How do we find our sanity in this world that is so overtaken by technology? that the first thing we look at when we wake up in the morning is our device. And the last thing that we touch before we go to bed is our device. How do we achieve life technology balance? What does balance mean? Balance is finding time for things that we need to do and things that we want to do. Everybody's needs and wants are different. What might be some needs, some normal needs, sleeping, healthy eating, exercising, being productive at work, finding time for family that does not include media. What might be some wants? Find us browsing on the internet. There is nothing wrong with it as long as there is balance, as long as there is life technology balance. Once upon a time, we used to say work-life balance. I had a major issue with that phrase. Why did they put work before life. Why is it not life work balance? So when I coined the phrase life technology balance, I made sure to put life before technology because life comes first. Another take on that phrase could be life work technology balance. Irrespective of the details, irrespective of the semantics of what that phrase is called, the message is we have to try and find that balance in our real life. The people who attend Reconnect Nashville or who hear the message of Reconnect Nashville will reconnect with health, joy, and efficiency. They will be able to, I hope, let go of the guilt of screen time. Not all screen time is bad. Not all screen time can be looked down upon. 
we often are able to use screens to improve our health, to improve our productivity, to truly stay connected with family halfway across the country. We just have to let go of the guilt of screen time and start accepting our devices as tools, not as distractions or 24 seven sources of entertainment. I always say with more and more technology, we are becoming powerful. Humankind is becoming powerful. Technology empowers us. But remember, with great powers come great responsibilities. What we do with that power that technology gives us determines who we are, who we shape our world around us to be, and what the future would look like for our children. We have to remember to stay in charge of our time and attention. We have to be the bosses of our own life and not let technology overtake our mind, our health, and our relationships. We have to find joy in real life. We have to find joy in real life. And in that process, we will have to let go of the pleasures, the temporary pleasures, the tempting pleasures that online life offers us. So please join me at Reconnect Nashville this Saturday, September 24, from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. at View Studio Nashville. And remember, if you have not yet purchased your tickets, you may still do so at www.reconnect.com expert. If there are family members, friends, colleagues, children in your community who you think will benefit from a little bit of an inspiration for more productive and more peaceful life, please invite them to reconnect because together is always better. Thank you. I believe Ms. Gupta, you had your hand up. Do you have a question? You're muted. <clears throat> so everything you explained was like quite an eye opener. And I am regularly listening to your webinars and your videos I'm watching. So one question which came to my mind today is how can we differentiate, suppose, uh, for example, if we work two hours on some project without phone near us and we do the same type of another project for two hours with phone near us and using it in between, will it make some difference to find out how much productive we were in this session or in that session? Do you suggest some idea by which we can assess ourselves in which category we are. If we use, if we do our work, some work, you can say either cooking or reading or anything. So is there something by which we can self-assess ourselves? Yes, there are ways to do that. It will need a little bit of organization and planning in order to do that. And some time for introspection and reflection after you have done the activity. So when I present the data that every time we are distracted from work, it takes 25 minutes, about 25 minutes, to regain our attention. That data comes from a research study, a properly published scientific research study, where a group of professionals were given a certain task to do. And then they were intentionally, one group was intentionally given distractions at a certain interval. And the other group was not given any distraction. And the other group was allowed to work with full focus and attention. After the conclusion of that research study, the researchers found that it took about 19 to 25 minutes for the distracted group to regain their attention every time they were distracted. In our day-to-day -day life, if we know that for the next two hours, there is a certain task that needs to be done. 
The step number one is to think about all the steps involved in accomplishing that task. Does any of that step require the use of wireless mobile device, right? If it does, can we take that functionality out of the wireless mobile device and ahead of time, write it down on a piece of paper? For example, we are going to do something and we know that we might need to use our device to check our password or to check our email. How about we put together all of the resources needed to accomplish that task ahead of time, write it down on a piece of paper, print everything that we need from our devices. Once we have all of the tools necessary for that task, then turn off the device put it away in a desk drawer and just focus on that project for the next two hours that needs to be done. Now, if we want to do this in a scientific way, well, of course it would need to be done in a research study, but in your day-to-day -day life, ask yourself after those two hours, how do you feel? Do you feel that you truly made use of every single second of, that, of those last two hours? Do you feel you were more productive this time around than what you have generally done? Now, remember, we can't keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect different results. We can't keep doing the same exercises over and over again and expect that suddenly our strength training will improve. When we work with strength trainers, they gradually up the amount of weights that they have their participants pick because they need to challenge them. So we cannot expect to be working with distraction over and over and over again and expect that tomorrow we will be more productive than what we were today. So something has to change if we want a different outcome. If we work with intention, our output will be way greater than if we work with distraction. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for participating. Any other questions from the audience? All righty. <clears throat> so that brings us to the end of today's episode. Reconnect Nashville is happening this Saturday, September 24, from 2 p.m. to 5, 5 p.m. For more details, please visit www.reconnect.expert. I will be joined by my phenomenal co-speaker, Tara Heaton. She is a communication and neuroscience expert and the founder of the renowned Talk to the Brain platform. Tara is going to help us feel the layers of how to find joy in real life, how to distinguish joy versus pleasure, what is online pleasure versus offline joy means, what is more sustainable, what is going to help us get through life. So wait no more, get your tickets, and I will see you on Saturday, September 24, 2 to 5 p.m. at U Studio in Nashville. Let's reconnect with what truly matters. Let's reconnect with real life. Let's reclaim our time and attention. Let's find some health, some joy, some productivity, some efficiency. Let's ungrip devices and grip life. I will see you next time. Thank you.